Hello and welcome to another video. We're still solving the starting point machines for Hack the Box. We have now moved to tier one. You need to walk before you can run. So in the last video, I solved the dancing challenge and how starting point works. For each tier, there are three free machines and then the last two are VIP. And as I said before, I'm going to solve the free challenges first and then double back and do the VIP. So, as I said, we're in tier one. And so we're going to learn a little bit about SQL injection, networking, and Linux fundamentals. Hack the Box also has a separate service, Hack the Box Academy, which has modules that you can learn about specific subjects. So in this case, for tier one, these are the modules that we're going to use. So let's get started. I am going to do, oh, wrong one, appointment. Okay, so we have a new box. So let me spawn the shell. and it's creating the instance. Okay, let me try to refresh because it's kind of taking a little bit of time. Okay, we have our IP 10-129-73-86. So let's go to task one. What does the acronym SQL stand for? Structured Query Language. Okay, so with SQL or Structured Query Language, you can create queries that um, to select data, update data, delete data, and things of that nature. Okay, what is one of the most common types of SQL vulnerabilities? SQL injection. So SQL injection is where the application has a, it does a sanitized input, meaning the input that you put into the application um, the application assumes it's good input and in most cases when constructing your query on the back end is being constructed dynamically with the input that you have entered so SQL injection is very um, it can be very catastrophic you can dump tables um, so for instance if you had a credit card company and you found an SQL injection attack you could dump tables to show credit card information and things of that nature so SQL injection is still a problem in the industry and that's one of the common SQL vulnerabilities moving on what is one of the most common types of oh I saw that one okay what does PII stand for Pers uh, personal Mobile identifiable information. Okay, PII. I think I messed. Hold on. So let's go to Google because PII, what does the P stand for? Uh, personally. Okay. I knew I was close. Okay, personally identifiable information. So PII, when I mentioned the last example with the SQL injections, if you had a bank and you was to dump the tables and credit card information, so personal identifiable information or PII is information that's related to you, such as your social security number, your credit card information, sensitive data, right? That should be stored very securely. So. What does the OWASP top 10 name the classification for this vulnerability? 
Okay, so let's go to... I want to say the... Ah. Oh, wow, this is top 10. And... Okay, so we're going to go to the top 10. So we need to see which one... Uh... So I think I might be looking at an O1 for this classification. So it's not broken access control, cryptographic injection. I want to say security misconfiguration. Let's see, security misconfiguration. If I can spell, I don't think that's it. No. So I'm going to do a hint. It holds the third place, first place in the previous one, in the OWASP top 10 list of most commonly met web vulnerabilities. Use the complete classification name. So if we go to the third, injection. So let's see. It probably is... I don't think they're talking about um, the 2021. Okay. Okay, hold on. The third, so let's, I want to say A03, 2021 injection. Okay. Yeah, so I had to use the hint going here. Injection in 2017 was number one. It has moved now to number three in the 2021 list, which is the current list. Okay, so what service and version are running on port 80 of the target? So again, we have our IP address. We're going to have to use Nmap. So let me copy. And I'm going to remove these. Let me open a new tab in the terminal and say Nmap SV paste and we're going to do verbose Okay. And our question is what services and version are running? So we're going to the service here. So Apache HTTPD two four 38. Oh, Debian. So we're going to copy all of this. What is the standard 
port used for HTTPS. That's 443. HTTP non-secure uses port 80. HTTPS, the S is for secure, being sent through encrypted channels. That's port 443. What is one luck-based method of exploiting login pages? And that's going to be brute forcing. So brute forcing is where you have possibly have a username and you're trying to find the password. So you try, you enumerate with many different passwords until you're, until you get a successful login. Okay, what is the folder called in web application terminology? It's called a directory. And what response code is given for not found errors? So we're going to go to Google. Let's go. And I'm going to say HTTP codes not found. It's a 404. I believe I was going to put a 404, but I wanted to be sure. Okay, what switch do we use with GoBuster to specify we're looking to discover directories and not subdomains? So, let's go back to our terminal. Let's go here. We're going to say GoBuster. Uh, help and it's DIR for directory okay what symbol do we use to comment out parts of the code so I believe that's going to be an ampersand yes so when you are using SQL um, you use the ampersand for commenting out code so we need to submit the root flag so let's use GoBuster and I'm going to say I'm going to set up the command and then I'm going to talk about it in a minute so hold up hmm okay so let me Okay, so I'm saying we're going to use GoBuster because we're going to try to find um, directories and we're going to specify our URL, HTTP, so that's going to be on port 80 and then the IP address we were given, we're going to say, okay, give um, a word list and the word list is listed here, DirBuster, directory list, uh, 2.3 medium that's the one I usually start off with and so now Durbuster is going to do forest browsing to see if um, what directories they can find so we have a images CSS and JS and they have a 301 which means it's going to be redirected Okay, so I see a vendor. So we can actually start going to some of these. So if I say vendor here. Okay, we are able to look at, we're able to look at the directories that were found. So um, if we wanted to, 
enumerate further search for vendors and then do recursive it will find these folders here so what I'm going oh okay not that so what I'm going to do is go here and let's see I'm going to say root password no okay so okay that really didn't give us anything looking at the page source Okay, let me go back. Okay, so we have SQL injection. So imagine if I put admin or one equals one. Okay, so I didn't even need to do <laughs> I didn't even need to do this. Um, essentially, what I did was I did SQL injection. Um, I looked at the tags, <laughs> and I saw it did SQL. So we're going to do S uh, SQL injection. So I can explain. All right. So we have pwned appointment. So I can explain what I did. So let me Okay. Okay. So what we did, just to recap ask what SQL stood for, structure query language, uh, what is one of the most common attacks, SQL injection, what does PII stand for, Personal, uh, personally identifiable information, uh, the OWASP top 10, I had to use the hint here, it was the third, which is injection, it wanted the full um, name, then we used NMAP with the IP we were given here and we looked for services and we did verbose and we found the version Apache HTTPD 2438 Debian and then what is the standard port used for HTTPS is 443 and what is one luck based method of, of exploiting login pages brute forcing and what is a folder called? It's called a directory. And for not found, that's 404. And what was the switch? We used dir, uh, GoBuster help, and it was dir for directory. And what symbol do we use to comment out parts of the code? Is ampersand, that's what you would use for SQL queries. And then to submit the root flag I used a common SQL injection technique so remember we had a username and then we had a password right so I did the username as admin and I put a quote then I said or quote one equals one and then I used um, this with a space and then for the password I did any password so essentially what this does is imagine we have a query and it's select star or yes select star from users where user equal username okay so imagine uh, this is the Query on back end. So imagine 
what I enter it's going to say select star from users where user equal admin or one equals one so essentially imagine that this is like this so or like that no never mind that okay so what this is going to do is we add this quote here because it's going to close this section of the user and then we have our or statement so with or statements it means either we have a user name admin or this statement of one equal one has to be true it's either or and the only way this was false is if both of these are false but one equals one is always going to be true that's a tautology that's what it's called in mathematics a tautology it's always true one is always going to equal one the sky could be green the water can be yellow if someone asks does one equals one the answer is always going to be yes yes one always equals one so in this case even if we don't have a username admin so this section is this part of the um, query is false but we have the or statement so it's like okay we don't have a username admin but let's see if one equals one yes one equals one that always <laughs> that's always true so it's like okay we're going to return the results <clears throat> excuse me return the results and we have this um, semicolon here to end the statement and another way to do comments is to do the double hyphen and I'm adding a space here um, to just um, that's just a common technique so what this will say is so imagine we had an additional query select star from um, grades where grade equals a and user equals user okay right so what this comment will do is essentially this code will not be executed so it's pretty much like that code has been deleted so that's a common example of doing SQL injection is to have a payload uh, especially for a username a payload of and you usually admin and you do the quote or one equals one and the semicolon and the comments with the space and then you can make your password anything and if you have SQL injection you will be able to log in as we shown here so that's what I did to log in so I hope you learned a little bit about SQL injection and a little bit about GoBuster. We're probably going to do more of that in the upcoming machines. So I hope you have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.